Yeah, so my name is Abu Fofana, and what I'm currently doing, uh, I have to kind of realize um, that I am in it and I'm doing it because at one point it was just an inspiration. But what I'm doing essentially is I am helping the minority women uh, owned business community and teaching them skill sets that will allow them to monetize their creativity, their business in the online and, and digital media world. Um, so I do that currently through a marketing accelerator called Power Your Launch. And the goal is to teach them skills um, to be able to make sales in their business. And so that's what my current focus is, is to help people get to the bag. <laughs> so I think the desire to uh, do what I'm currently doing. I remember uh, hearing uh, Tristan Walker of, of Bevel at that time, Walker and Company, he used to say, I'm uniquely positioned to run this type of business because I have firsthand experience, I, I've been around it. Or hearing Tyler Perry talk about how he's uniquely positioned to tell the stories that he tells because when he was growing up and his mom was going through abuse and you know his neighbors and things like he used to tell jokes through uh, jokes to lighten up her mood and to make her laugh and so for me being around a single parent you know uh, African black woman who refuged here from Sierra Leone West Africa to try to have a better life for her and her seven kids I seen a lot of the opportunities that she was denied and knowing that she was denied that and a lot of times because she was a woman because she was black woman and you know I said you know what I, I remember being young and wanting to go get a job at like eight nine years old <laughs> to try to help my mom but as I would get older I was like well what ways can I impact someone oh I could teach them a skill if I teach them a skill then no one has control on how much they can make no one has control in the value they could provide. And so I started leaning towards skill building and helping teach people skill building because I seen firsthand a lot of the things my mom was denied and even today, right? Women that are in my life, you know, I was raised by a village of women, but I think that really motivated the interest and, and there was alignment. So I felt like I was uniquely positioned to do that. To work in a Fortune 500 corporate and then I left again and so, um, I started really early just sharpening my skills back in like 2008, 2009. This is when advertisement first came out on these social platforms. But I saw where the puck was going to be. I said if they're collecting all this data on people using these platforms that are free, then what can you do with that data? Like can you get back in front of these customers? Can you talk to your customers in a different way? So I took off my consumer hat and I put on my CEO hat and said, how can I leverage these platforms? So I kind of saw it where it was going before a lot of the people around me. There were many times when people would tell me, when I was starting on this adventure, uh, that it was, like I said, my professors thought that, you know, it was a fad. A lot of my peers didn't really understand what I was saying and, you know, it almost felt like I was crazy. It's so always it like, you know, I'm Paul Revere telling them, you know, hey, the British are coming. <laughs> and everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy. And, you know, you're crazy until you're right. And then you're a genius. <laughs> and so that's essentially what happened. But during that time, I had to really, you know, it wasn't easy betting on myself or having a confidence to say, I know this to be 100% true. It was really a gut feeling. And I said, what's the worst that could happen if I do all this and, you know, you know, I end up graduating college, I'll leave with a degree like everybody else. If I do all this and it doesn't succeed, I've learned a lot of skills along the way. And so with me, I looked at it as the glass half full. And I think sometimes when you, you, you have a gut feeling, you have to be so, you know, positive around it that you radiate and you nurture the soil, right? Like, you could have a plant, but if you only water it and it receives no sunlight, it won't grow. If you only give a sunlight and you don't water it, it doesn't grow. So two things have to be true. You have to have this conviction about it and then you have to be so positive and your self-talk and you know, whatever people say, you have to have this level of resilience 
uh, where you're able to say, you know what, let me just listen to myself a little bit longer, like one more day, like one more day. And so for me, it was challenging, you know, as my friends went to corporate and started making a lot of money, I thought I was behind. I thought I chose the wrong path. But, you know, those who laugh first sometimes don't laugh last. <laughs> So when I started to really get in the groove of growing my business and, and so now I've had a proof of concept, I was making some money and, and now it was like, okay, can I grow it? I remember, uh, so this was around 2019, I was starting, you know, another venture and it, I had two, two decisions, my mentor, really one decision, I was at my mentor's t uh, I was at my mentor's house, him and his wife, we were out around the dinner table, and I had just left my, my job, uh, so they were trying to figure out what I was gonna do next. And it was like, well, the direct path is going to grad school. And I was like, well, I kind of started this thing on the side, and I was trying to come up with a, you know, a, a, a scenario where they would be acceptance of that, because I, I value their opinion. And so I told them, hey, I just launched this thing and I made $18,000 on the first launch. I was like, I didn't even start it yet. Like people paid me 18K to just let me know, to let them know when I started. <laughs> and they were like, wait, what? They didn't, they didn't really understand the online world. You know, that wasn't their thing. I mean, they're brilliant people. I mean, Harvard, Harvard Law, right? So <laughs> brilliant people. And so I was trying to explain to them, I think there's an opportunity here. You know, based on my skill set, I think I can teach business owners how to, you know, really leverage their business online to, to market themselves better and, and to make more sales and increase their visibility. And so they were like, yeah, just like also focus on studying and getting the applications done. So I was like, all right, so in my mind, I was like, okay, I gotta prove to them that this could be viable. And so the next launch we did, I made 12,000. So I was like, dang, I'm going in the other direction. Maybe they were right. <laughs> and so I was like, let me go, you know, I always pull up the Panera. I'd always be studying in my corner. <laughs> and um, I was like, okay, let me just test it out in February. February rolls around. I make about 30K and I'm like, wait a second. Okay, I equaled what I made in January. March rolls around and I think I made like almost like 48,000. So I was like, okay, now it's trending in the right direction. So for me, I, it was just myself because I wasn't ready to bring someone else on because I didn't really know if this was a, a, how the, the lifespan of this business. And so I remember I hired an accountant because I'm like, okay, I just got a lot of cash. I need to figure out what I'm gonna do. So I hired an accountant and she's like, well, how much do you think you could make this year in this business? And I was like, I don't know, maybe 200,000, maybe $200,000. And I was like, I'm running a really profitable business because I'm selling digital goods. The only thing that costs me right now is my time. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't count their time in to the cost. And it took a lot of my time. Um, and so, and there were systems I had to pay for, tools I had to, automations I had to make sure were right. I had was customer service, answering emails all nights of the hour because we were getting clients from all over the world. And so I was like $200,000. Six months in, I had already, yeah, I made way over $200,000. So we came back to the table and now I had to my mentors, I said, hey, like, look what I've been able to do. I've been able to make over half a million dollars in six months. And they were like, wait a second, we're doing what? And I tried to explain to them again. <laughs> it's doing the same thing I had told them earlier. So they said, okay, maybe you should test this out a little bit longer. And I was like, okay. And that first like half a million I made, I was probably like 65% was about profit. And so this is a high profit business. And so then I, the other was accounting, the other 35% uh, accounted for tax and also systems, and I should have hired right then. But I told myself, I was like, oh, I got this. But although I was, I was literally spending 12 to 14 hours, if not 18 hours a day on this, when I made half a million dollars. So I couldn't see it because I was still looking at the trees. I couldn't see the forest. And so after the first year, I hit a million dollars, but it was the most, it was the hardest million that I've ever worked for in my life. And I was like, okay, now it's time to hire because either I'm gonna end up 
in a, you know, at the hospital or I'm going to have to like get people to help me. So to leverage a lot of this, this um, pain that I'm currently in this transition. Yeah, I think for me, when it came to hiring, um, I, because I had ran a company when I was in, in college and it was just a clothing business to people, but to me, it taught me everything I, I needed to know. Because in that clothing business, I had hired people, I had fired people. Like that was my first inkling of running a business. So it's like when you take a test the second time and it's the same exact one, you're like, oh, okay, I kind of have an idea of where things should go. And, and it helped me tremendously. Um, so I knew one, don't build a business and don't hire people just to say you have a team. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they want to appear to be a company, but you're not a company. There's a difference between a startup and a company. A company has clearly defined its processes to generate revenue activities and they know how to scale, right? That's a company. A startup, you're trying to figure everything out. So you can't be a startup and, and operate like a company. And this is where the, the biggest gap with entrepreneurs are because they start something, they're like, I want to be like Nike. I'm like, you can't be like Nike. You have to look at where Nike was, where, where, where you were at that time. And so for me, when I looked at my business and I looked at, well, where am I spending most of my time? I had to take an, an audit of myself. And I, and I started tracking my activity. And I said, okay, I'm spending all my time in the inbox and I can't really get anything done because I'm spending four or five hours in the inbox. And then if they have a question that I, I haven't built, then I gotta go build it. And the second thing was, okay, if I need to hire and grow, I need someone to capture all the steps and procedures. So I'm gonna hire customer service to manage the inbox and an operation person to start thinking ahead of what's it look like if we were to hire a team and then the statement of work, um, a statement of processes that we needed to create in order to accommodate the new team members that we would be eventually hiring. So that's where I went, right? I went with someone, uh, uh, the two things that was taking up most of my time and I, and I went in that direction of hiring for that. So for me, you know, that first million was, was hard. <laughs> that first 100,000 was hard. Like that first 10,000 was hard because I was trying to replace my job income because I need an income, right, to prove to my mentors. So here I am trying to build a business plan, business plan just for my mentors so they could like, okay, this is a good plan idea. So for me, the first 10,000 a month consistently was hard because um, that, mean, that meant I had to get clients consistently. So that means the next month I had to do a lot of marketing activities in order to acquire customers. And I was still trying to figure out what my customer acquisition cost was, how much am I spending on marketing, you know, should, what process uh, should they follow in order to become a, a customer, what the customer journey flow was. So that first 10,000 was, was challenging. The first 100,000, the next threshold was $100,000. A hundred thousand uh, from 10K was easier because I just multiplied my efforts in 10K. I stayed up later, right? I multiplied, I got on the phone a lot more, right? I multiplied those efforts. And because I got on the phone a lot during the, to the first 100K, I learned a lot of my customers and clients' needs. Okay, this is how they want things to be positioned. Okay, I need to add a, a video on my checkout page because they need to see a video. Okay, I need to give them the ability to schedule a call because there's a lot of people saying that they're gonna help them grow their business online and they don't know if this is real, if this is a scam. Like, you know, I need to make sure that they have the ability to access and, and get on the phone with me. And so that first 100K was challenging in a way because it required a lot of manual labor for me, it required me getting on the phone and that's hard to scale a business if you're having to get on the phone and talk to every single customer that, it, that is interested in, in your business. And so then going from like 100K to a million and I know the exact moment where I crossed a million because uh, I was at my friend's kickback, my friend Kevin, <laughs> and uh, I was at his kickback. He just moved into his brand new house so he had a kickback in his backyard. And I remember exactly the person that purchase that brought me over a million dollars. Shout out to Jennifer, wherever you are in the world. 
And I remember we were at the kickback and I got this sale and I was like, oh my God. And they're like, what happened? And these are some of my childhood friends. I was like, I just crossed over a million. They're like, a million and what? Like they didn't, they couldn't wrap their mind around it. And because when we were kids and we were, you know, dreaming, we were like, oh my God, if I, if I could just make a million, you know, I'd be rich and <laughs> I'd be able to take care of everybody. And, you know, I'd be able to build my own community and things like that. And that first million I hit, I was not rich. <laughs> you know, I was doing a lot better than where I was, but that first million was all tax, right? It was all expenses, all mistakes that I made. That first million, I probably took home about uh, maybe $90,000 in my salary. And in the business, I left about 90K. So at the end of the year, that first million was left with 180,000 after everything tax <laughs> after all the mistakes that I made like uh, wrong business structures like hiring uh, consultants who thought that they could take my business to X level and you know giving money to friends and family because we made it right I helped raise you you know like what are you gonna do to contribute now you know and um, all the phone calls I would receive would be about money so that first million was hard because I, I didn't know how to manage it. Like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I, at the end of the year, it was 180,000, 90,000 I paid myself. So I didn't pay myself that entire year. I was living off of my savings for my corporate position that I just left. So I was very lean, uh, I was making pasta, you know, eating ramen, <laughs> you know, uh, dollar slices, because I was between New York and Philly, so I'd go, you know, get the dollar slices, like, okay, how many dollar slices? If I eat one in the morning, one in the afternoon, you know, one in the evening, you know, the big slices, that's three dollars a day. And so I didn't pay myself, and then 90,000 I left in the business to then hire people at the top of the year. Um, so those are sort of like the different thresholds. So I, I quickly realized how much you make isn't what you take home. And there's a really big difference, you know, like what do you take home is completely different than how much you actually make. And so when I made a million, my friends thought I was a millionaire, but I'm like, nah, I ain't a millionaire. <laughs> like to me, a millionaire is when you actually go to your bank account and your, your net worth, right, is, is a million, not how much your business just made in sales, how much you grossed. And so I think there's a, there's a big difference when entrepreneurs how they, they structure their business and when they set goals, they set goals based off of sales, right? They don't set goals based off what's my margin? What's a healthy margin for my business? Um, and so that second year I said, okay, how do I operate at 50% margin or above? And so that changed my mindset after, but again, I wouldn't have known it if I didn't experience it. Yeah, for me, I think um, if you're trying to exponentially increase your learning, like definitely finding a mentor, right? And I think someone that is a few steps ahead of you, meaning that because you want someone that could stretch you and challenge you. Um, you don't want someone that's going to take it easy on you. Um, again, you have different mentors for different things, right? The second thing I would say is you want to find community of people that have normalized conversation around wealth and scaling. And so for me, it was, you know, when I would go to different conferences, I would try to find conferences where there were entrepreneurs um, there. Right. So I would say look for conferences where there's it's entrepreneurial. Um, uh, you know, I mean, you know, Black Tech Week is a perfect example. Right. Like look for those type of conferences. And uh, another thing I would say is I became an avid reader, meaning that every morning I read about 75 articles, right? So this is of current events, of things in my industry, things in complementary industries. I just needed to learn a lot because if I was in the rooms of network, networking opportunities, I wanted to make sure that if it's a person I wanted to talk to, I had the ability to have a conversation, but also I knew what was happening in my industry as well. The fourth thing I did was I aligned with podcasts, you know, because again, maybe you don't have access to that person. So I aligned with different podcasts that I would listen to. Uh, you know, you have good ones that are storytelling based, like how I built this, or you have, you know, uh, my first million, you have your first million with Arlen and Hamilton, which is again, another really um, good podcast. And so I would start aligning myself with podcasts that, cause it felt to me, I was having the conversations 
uh, you know, with them. I'd listen to like Recode Decode with Kara Swisher because she would interview the Mark Zuckerberg. She would interview the Elon Musk. And with me, I was like, how do they think, right? She's asking them a question, why do they respond to it that way? Because I would have responded to it differently. And so I started to try to create a framework um, uh, as well. The fifth thing I did was I created my value system. What are the things that I value? Because now when I don't have a lot of time, I have to be able to make decisions quickly. And so the, the, the value system became a compass. And your values are really based on the things that you believe, the things you're unwilling to co compromise on. So for me, if I felt like I couldn't trust, like trust was one of my values. If I felt like I couldn't trust someone I'm gonna hire, then I don't need to be hiring them. If I'm worried about well, what if they steal my uh, account information, then that means that I don't need to be hiring that person. It was very clear and evident. So what is your compass? What's your value system? Because this allows you to make really quickly, really quick decisions because when you're operating a CEO, you have payroll, you have people, you have clients, you have customers, you're trying to, you need to be able to make decisions rather quickly. And so that really helped me out creating this value system. Integrity is another one of it, right? Okay, we're gonna do this the right way. There ain't no shortcuts because if we take a shortcut, we're gonna have to come back to the starting point. It's funny because when I first started, uh, on this path of trying to impact and, and help people. Coming from corporate, one of the biggest challenges I had uh, working there was I couldn't see my impact. So when I started doing this, I could see my impact individually, right? Like I could see the impact that I was making. I never thought about like, okay, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you know, what's the impact you know, what's my imprint on this world? I never thought about those conversations until like I'd be out in public, I'd be at an airport, I'd be eating that Chick-fil-A, and people would run up on me that are students of mine. And they tell me their stories of like how they're able to put their two weeks notice in, how they're able to, you know, employ other people, how they were able to, I had a student that did three million in a year, and they, when they literally saw me, they had bought me a, a Roly, and I'm like, I can't accept, <laughs> but you know, but <laughs> you know, I had, and so for me, sometimes I don't realize the impact that I'm making because I'm so in it of trying to help the next person that I don't realize the depth of impact I've had on that one individual. When I think about my impact 50 years from now, I think what I'm doing is, and what I've been doing and my mentors are saying, you know, it's okay to turn around to see the progress you've made, the imprints that you've left. With me, I've been so focused on the goal sometimes that I forget that there's a journey. And I, I, I learned that recently because when I hit my goal and when I got to the next destination, I realized there's a new destination <laughs> and the destinations don't ever stop. So how do I embrace the impact that I'm currently having and how do I look forward at the same time looking forward to what's the imprint I could have? And so for me, it's whenever people are telling me that I've impacted their life, their economic opportunities. That's why I started it. I wanted them to be in control of how much they can make. I didn't want anyone else to let them know that they couldn't have this opportunity because they are a woman or they're a black woman. And obviously no one's gonna tell you that directly, but you have a pretty good idea why you're not getting these type of opportunities. So for me, it's to help have them um, be empowered economically, right? And so, so they can make their own decisions. So I think that's the imprint I'll have. When it's all said and done, like if there's one thing Abu taught us was how to market ourselves and how to monetize and, and how to get after the bag. <laughs> the, the best piece of advice that I received that I didn't take, um, man, there's so many. Uh, I think that one of my mentors told me a long time ago that it's okay to put myself first. And the culture I grew up in, you know, didn't really allow for that. I grew up in a culture where everyone came before you. Your first few paychecks, you have to split it amongst the family, right? And so in that type of culture, in that type of environment, you never really think about yourself. And so when I first started making money, 
I would give it out because I was like, oh, I feel like I owe these people. Oh, I owe them, right? They raised me. They were there, right? Um, and the more money I made, the more cousins I had, right? I didn't know I had that big of a family. <laughs> and so what I kept doing, I had this avoidance strategy. Okay, if I just give it to them, then like everyone will be happy. And the issue with that was I never put my own needs first. I remember someone had asked me, uh, they had asked me two questions. The first question was, what did you, how did you reward yourself? What did you buy yourself? And I was like, oh, I bought these AirPods. And they're like, okay, what else? I'm like, no, that's all I bought. They're like, so you made all this money. You're giving it to everybody, but like you've only bought yourself AirPods. And I'm like, yeah, like it's so cool. Like I spent $250 and, and they're like, oh, boo, you, you don't see something wrong with this picture. Like you're not putting yourself first. And then the second thing they asked me was, what's making you happy or how are you finding joy that isn't attached to making other people happy? Isn't attached to making other people's dreams or wishes come true? And that was the hardest question I ever had to answer because everything that I could think of was because I am impacting someone else. There was nothing that I could think of that was just for me, the things I was just doing for me. And so for me, um, that's one of the advice that I didn't listen to. And it took me a while you know, to listen to that. And when I finally turned around and came around to listening to that, the first thing you know, I did was, okay, I need, I need to find a therapist, right? I need to create distance between myself and, and people that are just really comfortable asking me for these type of things. And so it's hard because it was against my, how I grew up, it was against my DNA, but I started seeing that as something that was stunting my growth as a person, as a, you know, a CEO, it was just, it was one of the most difficult things I had to do and I had to create habits around it. One of the biggest habits that came out of that is I'm on do not disturb 24 seven because I remember monitoring my calls and 98% of the calls I'd get were people asking me for money. And so it became really hard because I didn't know what people's intent were. Dating became hard, right? You don't know what people's intents are and so you, what you do is you kind of hide in yourself so you're not accessible. So it's still something I'm working through to this day. Yeah, so I think for me, one of the things that's uh, really had a big impact and, and, and shifted, um, I think in the midst of everything, when I was sort of like starting to scale, the, the biggest thing that I learned was, you know, people say, you know, you have the same 24 hours in a day as Beyonce, as Oprah. <laughs> and technically it's true, but it's really not true, right? It, meaning that they have more resources they can leverage. They have more people they, they could delegate to so they can maximize their 24 hours a lot differently. And so for me, one of the things was really learning how to delegate. Delegation is a, is a practice. You know, delegation is a skill. Because a lot of times, like, let me just do it. Like, you know, when you hit that point, you're like, let me just do it. But if I did it, it would have been done the right way. But the reason why I say delegation and, and the nugget that was taught to me was the way you multiply time is you spend time today and you can multiply it later. So if I teach someone, and here's a, 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 a basic example of that. I can either every month log into all my accounts and pay my bills that's gonna take me time, it'll take me probably about an hour. Or I could set up an automation, I could say, hey, just go ahead and take money out of my account every month. So now when the, the next month comes, I, I, I don't spend that same hour. But the first month I spend an hour setting everything up. Month two, three, four, five, six, seven, and, and, and perpetuity, I didn't spend any more time. But again, you spend time today, the way you multiply time, you spend time today, setting everything up so you can multiply time later. Here's another example of that. When you hire someone, it is frustrating in the beginning because you're trying to train them, but you're like, I could just do this, it'll take me two seconds. But those two seconds keep adding up. <laughs> and those two seconds break your focus. Those two seconds break you know, what you can be doing to grow the business, what you can be doing to be better, but you're continuously spending two seconds coming back in the business. 
And so I had to realize, you know what, let me just train them. I know it's going to take a lot of upfront time, but once they learn it, then it doesn't take me any uh, much more time, you know, for us to execute these tasks. So that sort of goes hand in hand, there's delegation and multiplying time. I think, um, you know, five years from now, if we met up, what would I be doing? <laughs> That's a really great question because I'm trying to figure that out myself, but I, I know that eventually I want to have a portfolio and have operators that operate that portfolio of companies, right? That's the goal for me. And personally, I think what I would do is I'd probably just travel and write books. Um, I've written a few books that I've never released, and so I would probably just travel, write books, gather my thoughts, and um, I really like silence for some strange reason. The older I get, I'm like, man, I could really just sit here and think, and that's a luxury. Like, that's literally a luxury to, be, to have everything, your rent paid, you know, you know that you have capital and a, the ability to just sit and think, that, that's a luxury. So I think I wanna do more of that in the future, have a portfolio of companies probably in around e-commerce and beauty. I think that's a really great area to be in, a la Rihanna, um, to scale quickly and, 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 and et cetera. But that, that's what I'd be doing. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah, so again, my name is Abu Fofana, that's A-B-U-F-O-F-A-N-A-H. I always got to spell it out, <laughs> but um, you can find me on Instagram at Abu Fofana or on Twitter at The Abu Fofana, or just check out my website, abufofana.com. And the program that I'm currently uh, running is called the Power Your Launch Marketing Accelerator. You can go to poweryourlaunch.com in order to uh, learn more about it. and. If you don't remember anything else, if you don't find me, I will find you because you'll see my ads eventually, whether on Instagram, Facebook, whether on TikTok, whether on YouTube, dating apps, it don't matter, right? I will find you. But uh, thank y'all so much for having me. Truly appreciate it. Grateful for this opportunity. And best of luck to you that's watching this on your journey, on your endeavors. It's not easy, right? It's not easy, but it's, it's worth it, right? It's worth it.